Welcome to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk. Helter Skelter is an ugly sort of game. A sort of poor conversion of a title that, on more powerful computers, might be quite good. You're in control of a bouncing ball, and the idea is to bounce around each screen, hitting all the patrolling monsters on the head. The order to hit them is shown on screen with an arrow. If you hit any other monster besides that one, it splits in half, meaning you then have more monsters to hit with no increase in time. Essentially, the basics are here for quite a good game, yet Helter Skelter simply doesn't pull it off. All the action is jerky, so it's difficult to aim your ball correctly, and that's if your ball even responds to your key presses at all. It's maddeningly hard to control it. You spend all of your time either ploughing into the very monsters you're trying to avoid, or sitting on a platform desperately pressing the bounce key to try and get onto the one above. The most infuriating thing is that you can see that this game has got a lot of potential. You're just left wondering what went wrong. A long time ago, the star drifter spaceship of the title disappeared. Suddenly it's come back to Earth. You have been teleported in, unarmed, to discover what happened. You'll quickly find a gun, with which to kick some of the alien ass which now roams the ship. You'll also find bonuses and keys littered about. The keys are important. Without them, you can only make limited progress. You can only carry three items, including your gun, at any one time, so you need to do some careful planning as the game progresses, selecting your inventory carefully. Star Drifter was one of the Electron's most popular games, and deservedly so, because it's a hearty mix of blasting, exploring and mapping. The authors also quite thoughtfully start the game with a small puzzle to find and return a radio to the starting location instead of launching you into the bigger puzzle that awaits you. You have three lives and you're going to need them. This game is huge. Man, I love Beachhead. The first little jaunt you can skip if you wish. You enter a hidden passage and you move the ships of your fleet through it. It's all animated quite well and it's by no means an easy task, all those bullets flying around and whatnot. Why bother with it? Well, because if you complete it, you're rewarded with more lives for the next stage. This is the naval battle, which is actually two separate stages, each subtly different. The first is a straightforward shooting, where you must blast planes out of the sky before they unleash double bombs upon you. You can't avoid taking the odd hit here, but you need to master the up and down controls to keep this to a minimum. In the second bit, it's the ships that now attack you. Now you need to accurately raise and lower the gun turret. If you shoot long, or fall short, you get feedback and you can adjust your aim accordingly for the next time. Now you land on the beachhead and play a quite fantastic sideways scrolling arcade game. You can't stop this tank, it's like it's on ice, so deft up and down manoeuvres are needed to wipe out the enemy emplacements and reach Kun Lin, where you need to blast away the targets before you're inevitably taken out by the big gun on the top. Then you have to send in another tank across the beachhead again. Every level in Beachhead is more enjoyable than the one preceding it. I love it. Superior Soccer tries to be all things to all men, and fails quite spectacularly. Before this game, there were arcade football games and football management strategy games all done in text. Superior Soccer tries to combine the two. Here we're playing the arcade game only, as I suspect will be 99.9% of players. The game has throw-ins, goal kicks, a pitch radar on the left of the screen, and all manner of weird and wonderful key combinations which are meant to affect heading, passing and tackling. The management sections also have a large number of options. Unfortunately, all the arcade bits are just too awkward to play. Characters move jerkily, all too easily the ball's pinched from you by the computer, who then proceeds to power down the field like some mad PE teacher knocking the whole sixth form out of his way. Really, the game is for the hopelessly football-addicted only, and I can't recommend it. Sphere of Destiny is a game like no other. You're Bruce the Bashful Jet Ball, and you need to traverse 64 eons of fast-scrolling squares to see a picture of a naked woman. The game is so fast and so hard that you're doing well if you see the vast majority of it. The idea is that you speed up and slow down, navigating around all the coloured blocks that will cause you trouble. Blue and yellow blocks are no problem at all, so if you get a stretch of these, like the entire first level, you can push forward at 100 miles an hour. Other blocks affect Bruce's speed. A red one slows him down, a green one speeds him up. Then there are sections of the run where blocks are replaced by black holes. To sail across these, you must roll over a magenta block or hit the return key to bounce over them, incurring a time penalty. 
What tends to happen, however, is the game moves so fast that your brain simply cannot process all the different colours, and before you know it, you've rolled over a dreaded scion block. This swaps Bruce's control so that left actually moves you right. It's a shame that this game isn't a touch slower, as this would make it much more playable. 